most people are chasing something that that they'll never catch. If if you know uh, Zig Ziglar said, if you chase money, you're never going to catch it. And I was listening to a, a a personality expert who who I trained with, and he was telling a story of of when he went to a training with Zig or had a conversation with him. I don't remember the exact parameters, but it was it was one of these conversations where Zig said, um, "Listen, man, you're you're chasing." what you'll never catch. And he's like, I just, I feel like I'm chasing the next job. I'm, ch I'm chasing payroll. I'm, I just can't catch it. And Zig said, there's only three things you need to be successful. Number one is you have to help people. And if you help people, it's fundamental. Sounds simple enough. Most careers help people. Number two is you got to turn a profit. Nowadays, we hear all kinds of kids coming out of school and they all want to change the world. And I love that because I want to change the world but change the world with what you're unique at. Turn a profit at it so that you can stay in business. Stay in business, turn a profit. Help people, turn a profit. Number one, serve something bigger than yourself in, in, in a higher power. In my instance, is God. And at the end of the day, when those three things are met, money chases you. The word rich. You know, a lot of people throw that word around. And, and you know, right now we're 2021, right after COVID, there's so many disconnections. And in this world of investor confidence, in this world of speculation, people are really so hung up on getting rich fast. Building wealth is a marathon. It's not a sprint. Life is, in a, is not a sprint either. Why is there such a disconnection from reality today with people just chasing these unrealistic returns, chasing this fantasy world of getting rich fast? Because rich to me is the next poor. And I'd love your definition of rich because rich on paper means nothing. It's what you keep that matters. And I'd love your opinion on the term rich. Yeah. In the book, I start off with a story of my son and it was several years ago. And, and uh, I have now a 15 year old and a 12 year old son. Um, and they were little kids at this point in time. They used to share a room. We have a pretty big house, but they shared a room because I felt like at the end of the day, two brothers fight all day long, but when they go to bed, they were going to be buddies and they were going to have those years forever. And until they demanded to be separate, I kept them in the same room. And it was, it was, um, you know, growing up in a small home and, and then living in something different. It was my world of trying to teach my kids that the relationships and our family structure are way more important than the size of our house or separating in different spaces. And I think it's a, it's a, a great definition of rich when my son said, hey, dad, would you be rich if you didn't have us? Oh, wow. And I thought, I actually laughed out loud because my oldest son is the one that asked the question and he's very entrepreneurial and he thinks like I do and he loves talking about things that are really big picture. And I laughed and I said, buddy, in some ways, financially, I may have more money in my pocket. You're not cheap. You are not cheap. But here's the thing, I'd be empty. I'd be lost. I would never know what I'm missing. See, the, the key to richness is investing and giving of yourself to other people, to another purpose, to something bigger than yourself. And when you're building something bigger than yourself and, and your children are obviously a representation of that, I mean, they see all of our authenticity. They see you at your best. They see you at your, wor at your worst. That was really a definitive, uh, interesting point that I was talking about with Rich. The, the fear and the greed cycle is what you're talking about with people. And the why behind it is really simple. Most people are chasing something that, that they'll never catch. If, if you know, uh, Zig Ziglar said, if you chase money, you're never going to catch it. And I was listening to a, a, a personality expert who, who I trained with, and he was telling a story of, of when he went to a training with Zig or had a conversation with him. I don't remember the exact parameters, but it was it was one of these conversations where Zig said, um, listen, man, you're you're chasing what you'll never catch. And he's like, I just I feel like I'm chasing the next job. I'm, ch I'm chasing payroll. I'm, I just can't catch it. And Zig said, there's only three things you need to be successful. Number one is you have to help people. And if you help people, it's fundamental. Sounds simple enough. Most careers help people. Number two is you got to turn a profit. Nowadays, we hear all kinds of kids coming out of school and they all want to change the world. And I love that because I want to change the world. 
but change the world with what you're unique at. Turn a profit at it so that you can stay in business. Stay in business, turn a profit. Help people, turn a profit. Number one, serve something bigger than yourself in, in, in a higher power. In my instance, is God. And at the end of the day, when those three things are met, money chases you. And if you're, you know, the, 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 the analogy is used for this purpose. I, you know, you, you've seen the clients that watch their accounts every second of every day. I call it the Ebenezer Scrooge effect. You know, you think back to the old world of, of cartoons, uh, of, of, of Donald Duck back in the day, and, and then you go all the way back to Scrooge and, and the Christmas Carol and all these things, right? He counted and looked at his money all the time. All it does is that if that's what's filling your brain, it's not going to fill your, your bucket. It's, it's empty. It's completely useless. And I think our industry is one where it's so focused on money that in some ways it's awesome. And, and the way that it's awesome is I do videos on YouTube and I started doing some called conversations about money because I realized I was having conversations that people were afraid to talk about. I listened to one of your other podcasts and this conversation came up and it was so real in that, you know, we talk about things that everybody else is afraid to talk about. Yeah. I talk about money openly with my kids. We share it. When I grew up, it was like, you don't talk about your dad's uh, paycheck. You don't ask him what he makes. You don't like, there was this definitive line and it's, it's honestly that's that scarcity mindset versus that abundance mindset, right? It's, it's thinking that there's only so much to go around. We don't need anyone in our business. It's, it's not, it's a cycle of poverty. In my opinion, when you expand your mindset and money just happens to be how you get the things you really want in life, freedom, love relationships and money happens to just be a byproduct of those things it's a lot easier to focus on and so those clients and those people that chase that greed cycle chris is is i think inevitable it's going to be that way all the time there's always going to be cycles of of highs and lows it's focusing on staying in 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 some level of balance when everybody else is completely out of whack and and we see it all the time 